Uh, our next guest, uh, no no stranger to, to a football field. He's uh, now volunteering his time coaching the Ocean City uh, football team. I saw him at the practice field a couple days. Can you imagine that? Yeah, he's a uh, he's, he's, uh, longtime defensive coordinator uh, for the Vikings and, and uh, Cincinnati. Let's go to the uh, Tom's River Auto Group Sports Hotline and welcome into the locker room a good friend of ours, Paul Gunther. Good morning, Coach. Morning. Looking to talk some football. Yeah, man. <laughs> so uh, I, I, you know, I ride my bike on the boardwalk a couple of days a week, and every time I stop by practice, there you are in the field, and you seem to be the one that's taking taking charge out there, Paul. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say all that. I just. Uh, <laughs> My, my son's on the team over there. I'm taking the year off so I can watch him play. And, uh, let, you know, until he goes to college next year, it's my last chance to watch one of my kids play high school ball. And I'm just over here volunteering my time, helping out with techniques and fundamentals. I got to tell you, we're, we're going to start off with we're going to keep it the high school because mm-hmm. next week uh, the Battle at the Beach football classic. And I'm telling you, man, some of the teams that are uh, – that are going to be here uh, in town next week. It's it's incredible. Starting off uh, Friday morning uh, at 10 a.m., Washington Township versus Mainland. Uh, the 1 o'clock game is Hamilton versus St. John Vaney, Millville, and Tom's River North. They're two top teams in, in our state. In the state. Two top ten right there. At 4 p.m., and then Ocean City Pleasantville at 7 p.m. What a, what a lineup, Coach. Yeah, I mean it's really it's really a cool thing. I mean for teams to come to you know a town like Ocean City, um, and, and it's a really cool thing having four games each a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I think that the the main ticket games on sun, uh, Saturday night were uh, Saint Saint Joe's and Philly. You know they've been a good program for a long time. He's playing IMG coming up from Florida, and ironically, my oldest son went to IMG as a golfer, and I've been down there. <laughs> Quite a few times, and they are a powerhouse. So, uh, pretty cool thing. I think ESPN's coming out for that one. And, ESPN uh, too. Yeah, ESPN too. And uh, so, if if you love high school football, uh, there's not a better place to be next weekend. Uh, I was uh, when I I played college football at a little school in North Carolina called Lee's McRae College. Uh, after my uh, when I moved to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I became a coach at St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, and when I, w- I was the freshman quarterback coach, you know who played for uh, St. Thomas that year? That I, de- I mean, he was on the team, but I didn't even know it. Mm. Michael Irvin. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I never, and I never even saw him. We had a guy named Geno Atkins in Cincinnati who was a St. Thomas Aquinas guy, like seven-time Pro Bowler, and Giovanni Bernard was one of our running backs. So we had two St. Thomas Aquinas guys on those Bengals teams when I was there in. Uh, a few years back. Hey, Paul, it's Michael. I got a quick question for you. When you're helping out with Ocean City, do you have to square down your – your? is it mostly fundamentals, but or can you – like some of the schemes that you actually did in the NFL, can you try to, like, incorporate in the high school, or is it just too much for them? No, it, it, you just got to – you got to have realistic expectations, what the kids can handle um, concept-wise. Um, you know, really you're looking for, you know, tackling – you know, ball handling, whatever it is, catching the football, running the right route, the right depth, you know, the quarterback making making the right reads, you know, whether we're reading a safety or a linebacker or a corner, and just make sure the game slows down for them. Because, you know, you know, we're in high school, we've all been there, and uh, if you played football, sometimes the light comes on right away, and sometimes it comes on in your senior year or your freshman year of college. So we're just trying to, trying to find the lights for everybody to get, you know, just to – to make it simple for them. But football, you know, you just – X's and O's wise, you, you got to kind of pare it back a little bit and have expectations of what the kids can really handle. Gotcha. Um, when I was talking to you the other day, it sounds like you're everywhere watching these practices with the NFL. When you hear everybody talking about these joint practices that the normal person doesn't see and then they have a preseason game with that same team, you hear that so much gets done during the joint practices that doesn't get done during the games. Explain to me and the listening audience, is this run so controlled where the defense will say, you know, the offense will say to the defense, hey, we want to work on third and eight. We want to work on third and two. Or is it really almost like a game? No, it's controlled. I mean, the coaching staff, obviously, in the NFL, it's a very tight-knit community, players, coaches alike. So when a team comes in and they practice against each other, there's usually two days. Um, the first day may be, hey, we're going to do uh, a run period with some boots and nakeds 
play action passes, and then we're going to have 15 plays of that, and we're going to put our ones against your ones for five, our twos against your twos for five, and our threes against your threes for five. So the good players are going against the good players. You certainly don't want a guy, maybe your starting quarterback out there, when you have like a third team guy has probably long shot to make a team and he's trying to be a hero and he rolls into the back of your quarterback's knees. So that's very, that's very well scripted how we do those things. And then, and then after that, you know, you may do a special teams where you do a, a, a punt cover drill where the gunners run down versus the corners of the vice that are trying to block them. So it's special teams. You can get to evaluate those things. And then you have a pass skill and then some kind of a team period, whether it be red zone, third down, um, and those type of things. And then, you know, if you're doing a pass skill, the offensive and defensive line are doing, you know, pass rush against uh, pass protection. So it's very well orchestrated. The guys understand that, hey, you know, we're practicing, we're trying to keep everybody off the ground. You know, and typically what happens is if you do a third day of it, that's when guys start finishing people to the ground. Guys get a little bit testy, and fights start to happen. Yeah, and that's what that was my next question to you is like, how physical do these practices get? Joint practices get because, like you said, when you're fighting for a position, you want to be noticed. You're going to give it a little extra juice to make you know to stick out to stand out. Yes, yeah, you know yeah, the, that's why that's why we put the that's why I think the most important thing is not so much what you do. Um, Because it's all going to be relative to your normal practice. It's who you're putting against each other. Because a lot of the guys, the twos and threes, are trying to make the roster. Not only are they going to get reps in, and and let's just say you're playing on a Friday night and you're practicing against a team Tuesday and Wednesday, you're going to play most of the game. You're going to play most of the game on whatever side of the ball you are, and probably a lot on special teams. So um, those gives everybody plenty of exposure, and you don't, you know, everyone. There's 32 G- GMs out there right now that are just keeping their finger crossed that they don't get anybody hurt in the preseason. Trust me, that's the that makes the GMs very nervous putting a guy out there for an extra series that that you know is going to make your roster already. So um, this is a good way to control that, um, and, and, you know, and you're getting good work against another team. Hey, Paul, on that note, Danny Ryan here, the producer. I have a question just about you know a guy who got hurt in preseason in a preseason game yesterday. The game was called off. Former Jackson State product, seventh round pick of the Patriots, Isaiah Bolden. He goes down with a what seemed to be a head and neck injury, rushed to the hospital, and that's obviously not the part of the game that anyone wants to see or talk about. But can you take me through if you've ever experienced something like that as far as your defensive unit, a guy on your defensive unit going down with an injury like that, and how really it affects the locker room? Well, it's just you know, it, you know, in like for instance, yesterday, me or it's a preseason game; they're not playing for any records or. Or, or, you know, they're just trying to get through the game. I thought that was a great decision to end the game right there. I think it was like 10 minutes left, 10.30 mm-hmm. left in the game. Um, you know, there's certainly I've seen uh, plenty of injuries. Uh, I was on the field when Ryan Shazier went down oh, uh, for Pittsburgh on that injury. That was on our field in Cincinnati. And that was just to see a player go down and you're not sure whether he's on your team or another team. Um, we, You know, again, it's a, it's a really close fraternity in the NFL. And, you know, you just never want to see – a guy go down, but it definitely affects the, the mood of the game. So particularly the next couple series, guys are kind of dipping their toe in the water, and you just, you know, that's when re- really you get hurt when you're slowing things down like that. Yeah, and luckily they canceled the joint practices against Tennessee this week, so they're just going to play in Foxborough and practice there. But yeah, not, not a uh, pretty sight to see. Not what you want to see, no. Hey, Paul, with, um, with the teams that you've seen or heard about so far, is there, a, I don't want to call them a sleeper team. But is there a team that you think people aren't talking enough about that you've seen being on the sidelines or using your connections, talking with people for this, um, this couple of year? I mean, well, other than I, the Eagles. We'll keep the Eagles to the side. Yeah, I, I, I was impressed. I, I went down and watched the Ravens and the Commanders practice. I was very impressed with the Ravens. I mean, I think they're, 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 they're fronts now. They're a little bit dinged up at the cornerback spot. But I think they're, they're you know, um, they're letting Lamar throw the ball a little bit. I thought that their receiving core was uh, was very, you know, put together pretty good. So I think they're going to be a team. I don't think a lot of teams are talking about. Um, just trying to think some other some others. Obviously, everyone's on the Lions bandwagon. I, you know, they're, <laughs> they they have a deep they have a deep team. And uh, but you got to play the games. And people don't re- people ask me about the Eagles all the time. And you know, um, you know, what do you, what do I think how their season's going to be? It's just. You, from from year to year, you never can just take for granted that it's going to be that easy because, you know, eventually, you know, some guys are going to go down, something's going to happen. You know, it's just 
you can't always start off where you left off from last year and just assume that, that that's going to happen. That's the worst thing that can happen to a team. So um, it'd be interesting to see some of these out of the gate. We're talking with a uh, longtime NFL assistant uh, defensive coordinator, Paul Gunther, with us. Uh, Paul, the Philadelphia Eagles uh, could possibly be starting three rookies uh, this year on defense. Um, how much How much is that um, – do coaches like to play rookies? Uh, you know, obviously, if you got somebody that's really talented, but I mean, three three on one defense is that is that taking a chance? <laughs> you know well, what I mean? I mean it, it is. I, my first year in the coaching, I, I, an athletic director came in and told me one time. He goes, "As many freshmen as you start, you see many games you're going to lose." Oh, <laughs> really? You know, and, and, I, and it made sense to me, but no, you just want to get the now uh, you know, the young guys. If you know he's going to start for you, you got to put him. You got to put him in the briar patch as many times he can get as much experience and uh, things that he can see, whether it be from a route concept or a run play, whatever it is, and just keep repping it and repping it. And try to keep it as simple as possible for him, so he can play fast. Hey, Paul, Danny Ryan again. Uh, yeah. did you, I'm sorry. Would you want to add something else? No, I, I again, I think the Eagles. Have, you know. I, you know, I think they have the best roster in the league. So if they can yeah. stay up and get those rookies uh, mm -hmm. uh, playing at a high level and they're not giving up big plays, then I, I think they're going to have a tremendous season. Well, speaking of the Eagles, obviously they're going to have to go through a tougher schedule this year. What team in the NFC do you think is going to be the hardest competition for the Eagles? I mean, Cole from LBI chimed in and said Seattle will be good this year. They should have a better defense and O-line with three wide receiver weapons and two running back weapons. What do you think? I, I'm. I, mean, I, I still think the 49ers are tough. I mean, I think, you know, again, just playing against them uh, from a defensive standpoint, I think Kyle Shanahan uh, does a tremendous job in the, in the running game, how he moves so that his pieces around. Um, their, their line gets off the ball. You know, uh, you know, obviously last year in the playoff game, the, you know, the quarterback got hurt and, you know, a guy went in there with not a lot of experience. But um, I, I think – Easily, I can easily say the 49ers are, are probably the next best. Yeah, I, I would have to agree, and I think most people do. All right, Paul, we hope to see you uh, on the field next week in uh, Ocean City at the Battle of the Beach Football Classic. Stop by. We're going to be out there broadcasting live from 10 a.m. to 12 noon on Saturday. And then, of course, uh, during the regular season fo football season this year, you'll be joining us uh, for our Sunday broadcast. Paul, thank you so much. We really appreciate it, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right, fellas, take it easy. Have a good day. There he is, Paul Gunther.